A card is traveling along a mountain path. And it sits an orphan boy, Andres Egger, who is being taken to a farm with distant relatives. The grandmother invites him to the table with the rest of the children, but the owner farmer tells him to sit separately, emphasizing that he is not a close relative to them. After praying, the family begins to eat dinner. Later, the grandmother puts Andreas to sleep in the same bed as their children, but they drive the boy away in the middle of the night. Andreas is helping his grandmother bake pies when a farmer decides to punish him for breaking his pitchfork. The man beats Andreas with a stick in the barn, becoming furious that he endures the beating without crying. Andreas does chores on the farm, and his grandmother teaches him literacy in her spare time. But the distant relative is still not allowed at the dinner table. One day Andreas fails to handle a heavy wheelbarrow of hay and drops it, which the farmer sees. The farmer once again punishes Andreas, and the man's daughter spies on this. Suddenly Andreas passes out from sharp pain. A severe blow has broken his leg. The doctor called and puts a splint on his leg, but he doesn't care how it happened. Only his grandmother comforts Andreas. According to her, the pain will pass, like everything in life. And so time passes. Andreas grows up working on a farm where only his grandmother treats him well. From childhood trauma, he limps constantly. At the beginning of the 20th century, Austria is preparing for the coming world war. People are rejoicing, not yet knowing what lies ahead, but the farmer is dissatisfied with the fact that Andreas is drafted into the army because he does not have enough workers on the farm. Despite the boy's desire to change his rural life for a soldier's uniform, the farmer manages to negotiate a deal to keep Andreas out of the army. While working in the field, Andreas hears a woman screaming and runs to help. It turns out that the farmer's daughter found her grandmother dead, who died right in the kitchen. At the funeral, the young man says goodbye to her, after which he sobs in the field, having lost the only person who was kind to him. At the table during dinner prayers, Andreas defiantly throws his plate on the floor, and the farmer is about to punish him. But in the barn, Andreas refuses to obediently endure the beating, threatening the farmer that he will kill him if he ever touches him again. The farmer understands that it is better not to mess with Andreas, and drives him out of the house. Andreas takes a job as a laborer in the village to earn some money, and then goes to the mountains. There he gets a job as a logger. Together with a crew, they cut trees and bring logs down the mountain. After the work, he goes back to the village, but on the way he finds a lonely hut, near which lies the body of a lamb mauled by wolves. Inside, Andreas finds a sick old shepherd and carries him on his back to the village. On the way, the old man tells him about death, which he calls a cold woman without face or voice who takes people away when they are not expecting her. Along the way, Andreas accidentally stumbles and rolls down a snow-covered slope. Finally stopping, Andreas sees that the old man has risen abruptly to his feet and fled deep into the forest to stay there forever. In the village, Andreas enters a tavern where Marie, a maid who he likes at first sight, is working. In his room, Andreas counts the money he has earned. It is enough to rent his own secluded hut on the mountainside. There, accustomed to hard and painstaking labor, the man immediately puts things in order, builds a fence, and plants fertile plants. Soon a new batch of laborers arrives in the village. The government plans to build a cable car to climb the mountain. This will help attract tourists and facilitate the speedy connection of electricity. Descending from time to time from the house to the village, Andreas looks fondly at Marie, but does not dare to speak to her. Even the innkeeper advises him not to look at the girl, but he catches her eye and dresses nicely to meet her near the church on a Sunday afternoon. Andreas timidly invites Marie on a date, and soon shows her his cozy house. The boy shares his plans for the further development of the house, but he says that he does not want to be a farmer and spend his life in the ground. Instead, Andreas goes to the builders who work at the foot of the mountain. At their camp, however, the camp manager notices Andreas's limp and says that he does not need such workers. But Andreas manages to change his mind and get a new job. Together with the rest of the workers, he has to erect support towers and chisel rocks with a jackhammer. Andreas spends his free time with Marie, kissing her tenderly and looking at the beautiful views from the heights of the Alpine Mountains. Andreas prepares to propose marriage to his beloved and discusses it with his colleague. Together they come up with a plan to make the proposal unforgettable. The colleague uses lights to write an inscription on the mountainside, which is perfectly visible in the darkness. Once married, the couple move into Andreas' cabin. In order to provide for his family, the man appeals to his bosses for a pay raise and receives it along with an additional workload. While laying rope, the crew gets hit by a tree cut down by loggers. While the injured man is carried to the doctor, 
Andreas digs a hole to bury the limb. A short time later, the cable car officially opens. The event is attended by an orchestra, important guests and priests who bless the cable car and commemorate the workers who died during construction. Those present throw their hats joyfully into the air, after which the workers celebrate the completion at the tavern. The boss shows Andreas and Marie a newly invented light bulb that produces bright and even light. After the construction is finished, Andreas' life flows quite smoothly. He lives happily together with Marie, planning to plant more fertile plants. After a while, his wife informs him that she is pregnant. Then Andreas returns to the construction company, which is now laying a new cable car in a different location. One winter night, the man hears a suspicious noise and goes outside to see what's wrong. At that moment, a powerful avalanche picks up Andreas and carries him away. Andreas wakes up in the morning, nearly frozen in a snowdrift. Both of his legs are broken, but that doesn't stop him. He perseveres and crawls up to find out the bitter truth. As it turns out, Marie is dead, buried under the avalanche along with the house. Mad with grief, Andreas tries to dig her up, but in vain. His strength is failing him. Marie is buried with the other villagers who died in the avalanche. The neighbors express their condolences to Andreas, but he cannot hold back his tears. Afterwards, his colleagues take him to the tavern where he used to rent a room. He has nowhere else to go. He spends his days lying in bed until the bones in his legs fuse and he starts walking with crutches. Sitting outside, Andreas looks up at the ill-fated mountain. Limping, he goes to the mountain to look around the place where he was once happy. Andreas then goes to the construction company's office to continue his work. The manager offers him a position as a repairman, maintaining the existing cable cars. The man returns to his brigade, where, however, he keeps apart from the rest of his colleagues. Andreas is engaged in cleaning ropes, deftly balancing on the roof of the hoisting cabin. While walking along the road with his partner, he talks to him about death, and after a while he finds his colleague frozen to death in the bathtub. This is the fate of everyone who discusses death with Andreas. After burying his last friend, Andreas continues to work on the maintenance of the cable car. One day, he hears tourists walking near the support tower, which awakens pleasant memories in the man. In the evening, he writes a letter to his late wife. Going to the cemetery to visit his wife's grave, Andreas sees that their village is decorated with swastika flags. The Nazis have come to power. He continues to visit the grave from time to time, saying that there are almost no young people left in their village, all gone to war. Those left at home listen to the Fuhrer's call on the radio to increase the working day for the sake of the ongoing war. Losing all meaning in life, Andreas signs up as a volunteer. He is sent to the Eastern Front. There he is assigned to mine mountain gorges in the Caucasus to undermine them in case of retreat. He is alone at his post, only occasionally watching his colleague through binoculars and freezing at night from the unusual cold. However, it's as if his superiors have forgotten about him. When he runs out of supplies, Andreas leaves his post arbitrarily and goes in search of people. He stumbles upon a camp with a Nazi flag, but it has already been lowered by the Soviet soldiers who have appeared there. Andreas is taken prisoner and sent to a POW camp, where he continues to write letters to his dead wife. After eight years, in 1951, Andreas returns to his native Alps. The native village is now more modern, with cars and mopeds. The first thing he does is visit his wife's grave to throw all the letters he has written into the coffin through the gap. There he is found by the owner of the tavern. He tells about the large number of tourists occupying his room, but promises to work something out for Andreas. Walking through familiar surroundings, Andreas passes the farm where he lived as a child. His abusive stepfather sits in front of the entrance. He recognizes the boy, regretting that it was he who came back alive from the war and not his own sons, who all died at the front. The farmer asks Andreas to beat him to death, but the man is indifferent to the pathetic old man. He silently turns around and leaves. Andreas continues to work as a laborer. The years fly by and Andreas is now a gray-haired old man with deep wrinkles on his face. He lives in a wooden annex near the school. Through the walls come the voices of little school children. The children disturb him. Andreas enters the classroom to ask them to keep quiet, but this only amuses the school children and their teacher Anna. Later, she visits the man, bringing him a pie. The woman closely examines his home, deciding that there is not enough comfort here, created by a woman. Soon Andreas and Anna are traveling to the mountains on a cable car that the man once helped build long ago. He shows her one of his favorite places, from where there is a beautiful view. After the walk, Anna invites him to her home for dinner, and even calls him to her bed, 
but Andreas is still not ready to cheat on his late wife. He gets up and leaves. Soon the wooden school is about to be demolished to build a more modern building in its place. Andreas is forced to move, packing up his few belongings. He drags the belongings through the village, which takes on an increasingly modern appearance. Anna, who is leaving on the bus, sees the lonely old man off with a look. In the spring, he moves into a cabin carved right into the rock, like some kind of cave. In his loneliness, Andreas writes letters to Marie again, telling her about his worries. Every spring he goes to the cemetery to take the letters he has written to the grave. With the rest of the villagers, he watches the broadcast of Neil Armstrong's moon landing on television. One winter day, Andreas notices a crowd at a ski resort. People are looking at the frozen remains of some old man found in one of the deserted crevasses. Andreas recognizes the shepherd who ran away from him 40 years ago. The man attends his funeral, realizing that the shepherd is the last person who knew him at all. Andreas notices that he is completely behind the modern rhythm of life. The village has changed beyond recognition. Realizing that he has never seen anything but it in his life, unless you count his military service, he gets on a bus and rides to the final stop, looking at the scenery flickering outside the window. On the ride, he sadly remembers his happy past with Marie. Tears well up in his eyes, for after Marie's death he was unable to find his happiness. After getting off at the final stop, Andreas fastens his buttons and walks slowly along the observation deck. He contemplates the scenery spread out before him, almost identical to his home. Returning home, he writes another letter to his wife saying that he is not afraid of death, and immediately falls face down dead on the table, imagining how he lies in an alpine meadow, and, smiling, looks into the sky. Andreas is buried next to his wife, having simultaneously opened a cache of letters in which his whole life is described. This is the end of Andreas' story.